Good morning, folks. We've got planetary science, astrophysics. We're hoping to get part three of our special climate mini series out tonight, going to punch hard. And we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last day on the sun pretty quiet. Active regions aren't facing Earth, just the coronal holes on the south. We had been expecting their solar wind enhancement yesterday, and it arrived indeed. Not quite as strong as predicted, but not very weak either. Strong enough to drive 12 hours of geomagnetic instability overnight, the yellow bars at the bottom, and FYI, 12 hours of KP4 is equivalent to about one bar of KP5. Space weather is elevated, but not at scary high activity states. Let's quickly come to the moon, where apparently they like CO2, liquid fuel for future missions, they say. And fuel is the least of the Martian travelers' worries if they don't manage to figure out a way to protect from cosmic rays. Interesting thought experiment here with loosing Phobos moon dust and applying a current to the electric field that would be surrounding Mars thereafter. Imagination versus practicality rears its logical head in this one. Let's go next to a couple attempts to cut at the Hubble tension, one of the great ways we know the modern paradigm is incorrect. Here, they're trying to say, no, wait, it's not the incorrect paradigm. We were just doing it wrong. The article forgets to mention that if you switch up the analysis process, kind of have to start cosmology all over again. And here, suggesting that there really isn't a Hubble tension, that we just don't know how far away the galaxies really are, something that, once again, causes a lot more problems for the remainder of astronomy than it actually helps. And now we're on to a fun one. Folks, astronomy is not supposed to be making such enormous modifications to their story of how things came to be. Here, we're looking at an adjustment on how gold is produced, which adds to that modification story, but here is where we need to step back and recall those lessons from October 14th. First, there was the idea that stellar magnetic fields are helping to create elements without the supernova story. In this case, an electron capture process works the exact opposite way of what the field had believed for decades, and it works everywhere with powerful magnetic fields, which is basically the story of the cosmos. Oops. Then, the subfield essentially falls apart, as it suggested that the Earth can create all the elements up to iron, which is like walking up to a chef and telling him all of your diners have pulled their own dinners out of their noses and guess what? They brought extras for you. Folks, this is a critical aspect of not only cosmology and rewriting the Big Bang, but this plays in space weather and in catastrophism as the Nova level elements are where we know something magnificent we've never seen before can happen on the sun. Folks, tonight, we are hoping to get out that part three of Sun Controls Climate. Parts one and two are listed for you below the video. Hope to see you back here later tonight. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.